Hi there, this is Dr. Knotts, and I'm going to do this uh, lecture on melancholy caloric. Um, I had a request to do this video, so this is for you, Iron One. And um, sorry about the delay in getting things out. And if you could pray for me, I'm uh, sent home to die. Uh, I'm down to 15% blood flow, and, and so I'm exhausted all the time, and my heart's uh, been failing quite a bit. But God is good, and He gives us a day. And then one day he gives us eternity. Um, a melancholy caloric. Now you noticed in the lectures on melancholy and caloric, I was very descriptive, I thought, and um, I pretty much give great detail on what a caloric is or a melancholy. And when talking about the caloric, I made mention several times to a caloric melancholy. And um, the reason is, is temperament is something that is founded in the first six months no later than one and a half to two years. It is the foundation, the concrete, upon which the belief system and then the value system, they're in that order, are built. The experiential knowledge will come in on the third and fourth layer, and that's how all the decisions will be made by this person. It's the thinking process, um, how they evaluate themselves, their identity, and the world. So you can have a caloric... Um, with melancholy tendencies. You can have a melancholy with some caloric tendencies, but not many. The reason why a person is, is usually 60 or more percent, uh, usually it's 68 percent of one, and then they can be 32 percent of the other. Um, but they have to be at least 60 percent of one or the other. It's because they have what we call unilateralness or single brain single-mindedness, you will be dominant in one of those four characteristics, one of those four temperaments. Now, tempering means that which has been made firm, fully established, concrete. Uh, basically, to break it is to break the will and to destroy the mind. And in mind control programming, um, post, you know, or circa age six, they have to do that. They have to destroy the temperament or shatter the mind in order to recreate it. Of course, they'll build on the larger portions, which will be the person's temperament, so that it's not completely obvious that something's happened, and only to the trained eye will it be detectable, if it is detectable. So, a person will be set in a single temperament. They'll have traits and some characteristics of a secondary temperament, or trilinary, or quadrinary. Everybody can show some aspect of one of the four, because they're very similar in nature but different in construct and much different in administration. That's the way they manifest themselves, is through the administration or the lack thereof. In order for a person to be a noticeable melancholy caloric, they have to be what's called split brain or bicameral. And I hope this answers your, your desire for, for one. I think this is what you're wanting to find out about, um, Iron. Split brain is what we call a disassociative state, except it's more than a disassociated, because uh, there's six types of disassociation. There's five listed in the DSM, three, four, and five. There's actually a six. And um, I go through that in the book, the complete big book on disassociate identity disorder. Now, here's what it is. It, it's where literally... In the before the second year, usually about the one to one in a you know a, a year two months a year five months at the latest, something extremely traumatic happens to the brain. The brain is insulted or injured in a way that it splits, and it splits just above. Uh, if you look at the upper three eighths of the brain stent, there's a central fissure point. And at the central fissure point, where the effulgence of what we call the energy or the life force that's come stemming out of the, the brain stem via the spinal column, comes up and it goes around the oasis, which is the circle just above the central fissure point. And what will happen is it will create a mirrored image on each side. Now, what'll, what will be is the caloric will be on the right side, the melancholy will be on the left. It'll be left brain, right brain. This is called bicamerality, and it's where the brain is split. 
they did lesioning. They did complete separations of brain hemispheres. Uh, it was tests that were done in the mid 60s, early 70s, very early 70s. They stopped. Uh, but there was many of these experiments that were done that were never reported. Records were destroyed and they were passed on orally um, to where they wanted to find out exactly where a person could live in the brain. Now a melancholy will live in the back left hemisphere, caloric in the in the right front hemisphere, a phlegmatic in the back left, a sanguine in the the left front. There's four regions to the brain, and this is in the upper aspect where it's developed and how it projects itself through the second layer, which is called the subconscious into the presenting conscious. Now there's the presenting conscious, subconscious, the third layer, which is the interior aspect of the subconscious, and then the fourth layer, which is a wedge that goes right down to here. That's where the value systems are. And it's connected to the belief systems at the fifth layer. This is the no conscious or the un unconscious is the fourth layer. The no conscious deluge with the unconscious is in the fifth layer back here in the rear. The sixth layer is the oasis. That is the no conscious. And the upper brainstem, three-eighths, of an inch is primarily where the what they call the basement or the computer box or the computer or the black box they call it it's the autonomic structure of the brain that's the seventh layer of the no conscience and that's where the higher body functions the higher brain functions are all controlled from so what happens is it creates a left and a right side um, and it'll create them both simultaneously so that they can both function through the frontal lobes. Now what will happen is they will become um, purpose orientated. Neither one will be aware of the other one. It will like, be like a coin with two heads. Or as the ancient Greek god, which was the most powerful god, that had two heads or four if you could see them. One for each region of the brains. It was the one that opened the dimensions before any other spirit could come through. So that's the idea of double-minded. It's a face on each side or the harlequin, which is male and female, same body. Except this could be two males, two females, female and a male. And what will happen is as unattached as the caloric is. Because they're very detached, they're very unemotional, and very hard to feel anything. That's why they're purpose-driven. They're black and white in their thinking. The melancholy side will be hyper-attached. Very feely, very mushy, um, very much into music, very much prone to mood swings. The caloric won't. It'll be black and white, cut and dry, purpose driven. If you find somebody that is at times complete melancholy and at times a complete caloric, you know, or 68% of one and then at another time there's 60%, 8% of the other one or more, what you have is a split brain person, somebody that's bicameral. They have two developed personalities in the same brain. It's like having a hard drive with two dominant programs that can run simultaneously or work together or auton autonomically, you know, autonomously, autonomically on their own at work. What happens is to create that, and it has to be prior <clears throat> to the second year because it's solidified and made effectual prior to the third year. And unfortunately, the base of that, the foundation where the temperament is located, which is why many people with temperaments are childish, when their temperaments challenge, they will resort to childlike behavior, is because that part of the brain that holds the temperament never gets above three years of age. It's a part of the brain that stays continuously in the three-year mark. A person that is both caloric and melancholy dominant is split brain. That person will be unpredictable at times. You'll not know which person you're dealing with. They will most likely, unless they're in the arts, and they'll probably be in the arts. They'll also probably be in the technical or the drone field. Yeah, and drone I mean by laborious, mathematical, astuteness. 
they'll have one time, one part of the day where the caloric is dominant, another time of the day when the melancholy is dominant. And we'll have times when both sides come forward. When that happens, they'll be confusing. They'll be emotionally having upheavals, like on a roller coaster. They won't know why they feel the way they do. Their mind will race, and they'll not be able to shut it down. And um, unfortunately, they can be reintegrated. I mean, you can put the mind back together, and what will happen is one side will take the dominant position, and the other side will become a submissive. Um, if it's the caloric side that becomes dominant, and say 60% and 40% melancholy, that'd be a good thing. Having a caloric tempered with a melancholy is a great, great thing. Having a melancholy that's tempered with a caloric is not. Um, the amount of uh, malignancy or what we'd call malnormity with a dominant melancholy that has a dominant caloric is incredible. They'll be described as having a doppelganger. Um, they can be suicidal at one point and homicidal at another. They'll have such, the senuity within the mind will have such tension on it, inner tension, the inner dynamic will be pulling at each other because they're complete polar opposites. So the inner dynamic will have so much strain on it that at times they will, they will feel like they're snapping and becoming psychotic and that can very well happen. They'll be prone to breakdowns. They'll be prone to nervous disorders, anxiety disorders. Um, because the internal dynamic, the brain is not designed to have two completely opposite temperaments. It'd be like the scale. And whichever side is up, is up. Now, if that happens like this, and saying the caloric comes to the top, and the melancholy comes to the top, the other one goes down like a piston or like a carousel. And high-level disassociates, that's how it works. That's why you can have a person with all four temperaments, because they have all four regions has a, a primary person, primary temperament. And as long as only one's piston at the top, you're in good condition, actually highly effective. Disassociates will be the most effective people you can have. What happens is, though, when they enter the fourth life cycle, the ability for the modeling system to keep the segregational boundaries up becomes compromised. It becomes overtensed. And because of that, the potassium and the calcium, the calcium solidification to hold the memory systems within place and the segregational barriers and boundaries in place will become compromised by the upper influx of potassium, or what they call going from through andropause for men, menopause for women. The phenological changes will cause the stress to become more than what the barriers can handle. They'll become perforated, and as they become perforated and strained, they'll become opening, and you'll have one side leaking through into the other. Um, and that's when they begin showing signs of breakdown, nervous disorders, uh, unusual personality traits coming to the surface. Um, so to have two dominant traits means the person is split-brained. Two or more, I should say. As long as they only come to the top one at a time, they're fine. They'll be highly functional. Because when they need the melancholy, it'll come to the top, the chloric will go down. When they need the chloric, it'll come up. When they need to hang out with people, the third one will come up and the others will go down the same one. You know, he'll be the life of the party. Um, and they need the protectiveness, the phlegmatic will come up because they're the ones that will guard the body and do whatever it takes to hide. I hope this answers your questions. I hope it doesn't create more questions than what it is. Um, the disassociated mind and the staging as, as well as what they call uh, the characterization or the monopoly on how things are presented can become quite complex, but it's all very simple when you understand it. It's just some very large pieces of equipment that move up and down. 
So you can have a caloric that has melancholy tendencies, but because they're so diametrically opposed, you cannot, you cannot unless they're split brain, have a melancholy with caloric tendencies, with strong caloric tendencies. They can have like the drive of a caloric. Um, they can have the vision of a caloric. Um, and I mean, some of the most productive CEOs in history have been predominant melancholies with subcategory calorics. Because they're highly, they they're highly driven. They get that vision, and they don't know they can't do it. So when you add into it the intuitiveness of the melancholy, the ability to foresee problems, which a caloric doesn't have, they just go into it. They're impetuous. In other words, they just jump to things. The melancholy doesn't. He'll look for everything that can go wrong. You have that as a dominant trait, and then a secondary is somebody that can work through the problems. You get a powerhouse. But it would have to be 60% melancholy, 40% or less caloric, or you will end up with a split brain. So, and in that case, you become highly functional. Um, you become focused, black and white, <clears throat> purpose driven. So I hope that answers your questions. Uh, Lord bless you. The thing is, is God can use any person. He can change the heart, and he often will, and he'll bring healing to the mind. And um, God doesn't make mistakes. He uses our past, he overcomes our past, and he builds a beautiful future for us. All right, Lord bless you.